Welcome to Notman Financial Trainings app. This demo will give you a brief overview about our company and show you what you can expect to see when you download one of our training programs. Notman Financial Training is a leader in the industry for FINRA exam preparation. For over 20 years we've provided firms all over Wall Street with the tools and training required to pass the various FINRA exams. Harvey Notman is the founder and president of Notman Financial Training. Mr. Notman is the longest tenured instructor in the industry and has prepared over 85,000 students for the various licensing examinations, 95% of whom pass on their first attempt. Brian Marks is a partner of Notman Financial Training. He has also trained thousands of students and achieved some of the best pass rates on Wall Street. At Notman, we leverage new technologies to provide training through both traditional classroom settings and digital mediums. The Notman app combines three essential components to help you prepare for your FINRA exam. First, learn the information with our on-demand training. Get the exact same materials and instruction we provide in the classroom. Next, practice what you learn by completing quizzes based on each class, which use up-to-date and relevant examples. And finally, reinforce the concepts you've learned with flashcards. Our on-demand training leverages the same content and oral instruction from our classroom settings. To complement the video training, we will provide you with the corresponding class handouts you can print and use for note-taking. These classes are available to watch wherever and whenever you want. Following the end of this introductory video, we will show you an example of the on-demand training that you would receive with our Series 7 program. Each purchase program contains hundreds of practice questions that cover the same topics taught in the on-demand training. These are not questions repurposed from the CFA exam or any other professional exam. They reflect the most relevant and up-to-date information being tested and have been written with the help of current industry subject matter experts. You will not find practice questions on any other app that are as current and relevant to the exam you're studying for. And finally, you will reinforce the concepts you've learned by flipping through the flashcards. You can shuffle the flashcards to randomly test your recall of the information, ensuring it becomes second nature before your exam. Once you purchase an exam and create a Notman account, you will be able to sign into our website with that information and access additional resources. You can log into Notman.com and access your on-demand training from any computer. Download the class slides to use for note-taking, access our answers to frequently asked questions from students like you, and create a study calendar to stay on target. The following video is a brief excerpt from our Series 7 on-demand training. We hope to train you for your upcoming FINRA exam and wish you the best of luck. This unit will cover options. It is extremely important to have a conceptual understanding of the options material on this examination. When preparing and studying options, you should make every effort not to memorize formulas or to be dependent on charts. A dependency on charts or formulas will put you in a difficult scenario with regard to answering theoretical questions on the examination. Throughout this unit I will refer to the term the owner of an option. The owner of an option is the person that buys the option. So someone who buys a call option owns a call option. Someone who buys a put option owns a put option. Someone who sells or writes an option does not own the option. The key thing to remember with regard to options is that the owner of the option makes all the decisions. The owner of the options will choose if the option will be exercised or if it will expire. So a call option will give the owner the right to buy a specific security at a set price within a period of time. A put option will give the owner the right to sell a specific security at a set price within a period of time. So a call option is the right to buy, 
a put option is the right to sell. And once again, it's the owner. So the owner of the call has the right to buy. The owner of the put has the right to sell. The term class refers to all the calls or all the puts of a specific issuer. So the Yahoo calls are one class. The Yahoo puts are another class. The Google calls are one class. The Google puts are another class. And so on and so forth. There are a number of documents required for an investor to open an options account. Upon account approval, the investor must receive the OCC Options Disclosure Document. This document discloses all the risks of trading options, and the customer must receive this document by the time the account is approved for options trading. Also, the customer must sign the options agreement. By signing the options agreement, the customer agrees to all position and exercise limits. We will review position and exercise limits later on in this program, but for now you should know that it must be signed by the customer. Additionally, it must be signed within 15 days of account approval. If it is not signed and returned within 15 days, at that point, the customer can only execute closing transactions. Meaning, if the customer doesn't sign and return the document within 15 days until it is signed and returned, the customer can only liquidate positions. The customer cannot create any new positions if this options agreement is not returned within 15 days. There are a number of different options principles within any broker-dealer. The ROP is the Registered Options Principle. The ROP approves all options accounts. The SHROP, or the SROP, is the Senior Registered Options Principle. The role of the SHROP is to supervise a broker-dealer's day-to-day options activities. So the SHROP is the supervisor on a day-to-day -day basis, on a daily basis. The CROP is the compliance registered options principle. The primary role of the CROP or the CROP is to ensure that a firm's options procedures are consistent with industry regulations. So the CROP makes sure that all of the firm's options procedures are consistent with any recent changes to the rules or the latest regulatory changes among all the governing bodies. The CROP will also approve any options advertisements. With regard to the trading characteristics of options, most options trade on exchanges. When options trade on exchanges, they're typically listed on the CBO. The CBO is the CBOE or the Chicago Board Options Exchange. All options are issued and guaranteed by the Options Clearing Corporation. What that means is that there is no risk of default. When an, an investor exercises an option, there is no risk that the contraparty or the other party on the other side of that transaction will not be able to deliver because when an investor exercises, that exercise notice is directed to the OCC 
and the OCC will find another party against which to execute the trade. So once again, there's absolutely no risk of default with regard to options. Let's review the details of an options contract. In this scenario, an investor will buy 10 ABC November 50 calls at 5. In this scenario, the investor is buying a call, so the investor owns a call option. 10 represents the number of contracts. A standard options contract represents 100 shares of stock. So in this scenario, the investor buys 10 contracts, and given that each contract represents 100 shares, this position represents 1,000 shares of stock. ABC is the stock in question, ABC Corporation. November is the expiration month. Options expire on the Saturday following the third Friday of the month. It's not the fourth Saturday. It's not the third Friday. It's the Saturday following the third Friday of the expiration month. 50 is the strike price. The strike price represents the price at which a trade will be executed if the option is exercised. So this investor has the right to buy, given that the investor owns a call, the investor has the right to buy ABC stock at the strike price of $50. The combination of the expiration and the strike price is referred to as the series of option. So the November 50s are one series. The November 60 calls would be another series. And the December 60 calls would be yet another series. If either the expiration or the strike price is different, then it's a different series. As discussed previously, calls represents the class of option. So the ABC calls are one class. The ABC puts are another class. And 5 represents the premium. The premium is the cost of the contract per share. So this call option costs a premium of $5 per share. Keep in mind, though, that each contract represents 100 shares of stock. And this position is for 10 contracts. So the total premium paid would be $5 per share times 100 shares per contract times 10 contracts. So the total premium paid is $5,000. A number of the options questions will be wordy in nature. You should write out any options position, no matter how it's described in the exam. You should write it out on your scratch paper as you see it here. That way you'll have all the information directly in front of you and you can forget about all the extraneous terms and wording that may be inherent in the question. Standard options contracts will have an expiration of nine months. So from the time they are issued, they will typically expire nine months from that issuance. There are long-term options. Long-term options are referred to as LEAPs, which are long-term equity anticipation securities. That's just a fancy term for long-term options. Long-term options, or LEAPs, have a maximum expiration of 39 months, though most LEAPs are outstanding for no more than 30 months. Depending on the type of option, it may only be exercisable at a certain point in time. American-style options can be exercised at any point until expiration. Most of the options we will review 
for the Series 7 examination will be American-style options. European-style options, on the other hand, can only be exercised the day before expiration. So though they may be outstanding for much longer than that, the only time a European-style option can be exercised is the day immediately preceding the expiration of that option. When an investor buys an option, that is referred to as an opening purchase. Options are not marginable. They can be purchased in a margin account, but they must be paid for in full. There is one exception to this. Options with over nine months until expiration, and that's over nine months remaining until expiration, can be purchased on margin. Any options transactions will settle T plus one. And when an option is purchased, that provides the investor with three alternatives. The investor can choose to exercise the option the investor can also choose to liquidate or offset the position. So if an investor has an opening purchase, that would be offset with a closing sale. Just as if an investor had purchased 100 shares of Yahoo stock and the investor wanted to sell the Yahoo stock, they could do so and close their position. So if an investor purchases an option and no longer wants to own the option, they could close their position by selling it. They're not exercising. They're not allowing the option to expire. They are merely offsetting their existing position. Or the investor can choose to do nothing. If the investor takes no action, the option will expire. Let's take a look at some of the math related to options questions. The absolute most important thing to do when working through options questions and the first step you should always take is to determine the attitude of the investor. The attitude of the investor meaning bullish or bearish. Bullish means the investor wants the stock to go up. Bearish means the investor wants the stock to go down. In this first example, an investor will buy 10 ABC October 50 calls for a premium of $5 per share. Given that this investor owns a call option, the investor has the right to buy the stock for 50 The investor would want to buy the stock for 50 if it was worth more than 50. So therefore, in this scenario, the investor has a bullish view. The investor wants the stock to go up so the investor can buy the stock for less than it is worth. Let's take a look at a few examples. If the market value of ABC were to decline to $40, this investor has the right to buy the stock for 50. The investor will not want to buy the stock for 50 if it's actually worth 40. So therefore, the option will expire as the investor will take no action and the investor will lose the premium of $5 per share. In this scenario, when the market value is less than the strike price, a call option is said to be out of the money. Out of the money has nothing to do with profit or loss. All it means is that for a call option, the market value is less than the strike price. Effectively, it means that the option will more than likely expire. On the other hand, if the stock were to increase to $60 a share, well now, the owner of the call has the right to buy the stock for 50 in that scenario, the investor would exercise the option. 
because the investor can buy the stock for less than it's worth. So the investor will exercise the option and purchase the stock for $50 a share. The individual can then turn around and sell the stock for the market price of $60 a share, thereby earning a difference of $10 a share. Don't forget the investor paid a premium of $5 a share. So the investor's overall gain would be $5 per share. In this circumstance, the market value is greater than the strike price. And for a call option, when the market value is greater than the strike price, the option is said to be in the money. Once again, in the money has nothing to do with profit and loss. All it means is that for a call option, the market value is greater than the strike price. Effectively, it means that the option can be exercised. One more term you should know. When the market value equals the strike price, an option is said to be at the money.